This is 365 Movies in 365 Days, your daily movie podcast. Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Hopefully you guys are all enjoying your summer so far. So... Today, I kind of wanted to go over something that, um, I mean, we're halfway through the year, you know, 2019 is halfway done. Um, I kind of wanted to look back at the beginning or the first half of the year and look at what the top movies of the year have been so far. Now, typically, these are usually like the top 10 uh, type lists. Mine's only top nine because I couldn't honestly find a 10th movie. There were a lot of movies that were kind of like, oh, or mm, they were kind of there, but nothing that really stood out in my mind as saying this was a good movie, which is rather disappointing because last year there were a lot of great movies in the first half of 2018. This year, not so many. Um, And I think that that's, you know, been the worry in Hollywood a lot, not only just among, you know, fans you know and moviegoers but in the business itself is that there is a really big lull this year in good movies um i wouldn't go as far as to say that it's all you know sequels and all that nonsense you know live action remakes because um there is a couple of sequels on my list there's actually one two uh three four sequels Um, And then five brand new original stories. So original stories do win out this year. In fact, the top two are brand new stories. The types of movies are kind of spread out. Um, There is three superhero movies. There is one animated movie. There is one biopic movie. One movie that kind of maybe, I guess you would call it independent. Uh, movie on the list, there is a horror movie, and then there's one that, well, there's two horror movies, I should say, on the list, and then there's one that kind of pretends to be horror, but really ends it, and you'll, we'll get to that in a moment. But the movies, you know, are generally were either big hits, or they should have been big hits, um, or a lot bigger than they, than they've become. So, let's go ahead and get this started. So, at number nine, we have Midsummer. Now, this is a movie, that I think a lot of people thought was going to be this creepy, horrific horror movie that was just going to scare you and, you know, numb you for the rest of your life. And it really isn't that. In fact, I would I would say that it's not a horror movie at all. It's somewhere that it falls, because the, the main emphasis is on the relationship of the, of the main characters. And for those who haven't seen it, because it's still out there, I don't want to give too much away. Um, but it is a very much a look at relationships and what happens in relationships when things just don't go right, when you don't get that emotional support, especially during crisis. Um, that's another thing that was really big with this movie is how do you react, you know, to relationships and especially when your partner is going through things like a death or anything that's traumatic, you know, and how do you react to that? So it's not the horror story a lot of us were expecting. But it's actually better than I'm hearing from some people. Now, it is long. It is two hours and 30 minutes almost long. That is a long time for a horror movie. Especially a horror movie that has moments where not a lot happens. Um, so I can see where it really was a turn off for a lot of people. But for me, personally, I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if it probably won't end up in my top 10, you know, come the end of the year it might not even be on the list um at the end of the summer but for now it's there now at number eight we have captain marvel now captain marvel was an interesting story because it's good it don't get me wrong it's a good movie i enjoyed it i recently rewatched it um not too long ago and it was actually better the second time around than the first time and the first time i actually did uh, i really did enjoy it but it could have been better. There was just something that was missing. There was a, I don't know how to put it into words, but it was missing something. And it it had nothing to do with the casting. I thought uh, Brie Larson was great. Samuel Jackson was great. Of course, everything. 
maybe it was the stakes. The stakes just weren't high enough for me. I, you know, it's, I don't think it was explained well enough what everything meant. And I think that that was the problem. But that's the problem a lot of times in origin type movies in that when you're, you're setting up a character, a lot of times, you know, things like backstory and the world that they live in, especially with these complex uh, superheroes, it's kind of hard to try to cram that into a two-hour movie. Um, as the movie gets longer, of course, you are able to tell more complex stories. Uh, but Captain Marvel wasn't it, and apparently it it almost at times felt like it was a safe bet. I Hopefully, we will get a, you know, Captain Marvel 2 a follow-up, and we can explore the character a little bit more. And now that, you know, we know something about the backstory of the character, maybe next we can go into a little bit more of who she is. Um, at number seven, we have Avengers Endgame. Now, it is, I know that, you know, three hours, a lot of people were joking that, you know, three hours, ha, 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 that's a long movie. It is a long movie, but it is a lot of fun. Um, it is a tad... Uh, too long, just a little bit, in its current form. See, here's the thing. It could have been, you could have made it three hours and 30 minutes, and I still would have watched it, and in fact, I probably maybe would have uh, preferred it, but there is just so much going on that three hours and 30 minutes would have maybe given more time um, to individual characters or individual scenes. But of what we have in the movie, it's a little long only in that there are some parts... That could have been, you know, hurried up a little bit. We didn't have to spend a whole lot of time because we know that the characters for like Captain America and Iron Man, you know, it's going to be their last times that we see them. So there is this whole thing about, you know, we have to give them the proper send off. And that means giving them, you know, time on screen, you know, to flesh out their stories, which is great. But then that means something needs to be cut. And I'm not quite sure. So while I do say that it's just a tad too bit long, I act, I would prefer that it, it just went ahead and said, you know what, we're just going to do four hours, three and a half hours, instead of trying to push it at, you know, three hours and say, well, that's as far as audiences would want to wait, which is not true. Because if you've ever seen like classic Hollywood movies like Gone with the Wind or Casablanca, um, those are long ass movies. Let me tell you, a lot longer than Endgame, and we're able to, you know, not only keep our, you know, attention span going, but they're able to fit in complex characters and full stories. So I don't understand why Endgame, you know, couldn't have done that too. At number six, we have Happy Death Day Two. This is one of those movies that look. When the first one came out, I was excited about how great it was. Um, but in seeing a new one, um, I, you know, a lot of times with horror movies, you know, sequels just aren't the best thing. They usually, um, either get new directors or new writers and the plots or just get stupid. But this time around, I was surprised how well it was. And in fact, I actually enjoyed it more than the first one, even though it did stray away from being a horror movie, but it kept that horror feel to it while introducing science fiction to it and a lot of really comedic moments in it and I really enjoyed it. Um I saw it twice in the movies, um at the movie theaters and I I really enjoyed it and um it's one of those movies that I really recommend to people, you know. It might not be there in the top ten by the end of the year. Um but who knows? You know, stranger things can happen. At number five we have Us. Now Us is a kind of an interesting movie in that it's divisive, meaning I have people who that I know who really enjoyed it, and then there are people who really, really didn't get it and didn't understand it, and they hate it. It's one of those movies that it requires multiple viewings. Now, I did see it twice, so the second time I understood it more than the first time, and I really got a, a clearer sense. And since the second time I watched it at home, I was able to pause and, you know, rewind, pause and rewind, so I could kind of get deeper into the story which was hard to do the first time around. And so in that sense, it is one of those movies that is going to require multiple viewings to really get you in there. But from what we have so far, it was great. It was layered, it was complex, and it was mysterious. And I love, I happen to love movies that make me think and make me react afterwards. You know, 
I don't want to be given a plate full of answers um, sometimes. Sometimes I want to be like chewing on stuff for a while and us really, really satisfied that. So at number four, we have Spider-Man Far From Home. Look, I know this is like one of the current movies. It's gotten great feedback. It has a great uh, Rotten Tomato score right now, but it's not as good as Homecoming. And I particularly didn't love Homecoming. So what's that say about Far From Home? Homecoming was a great movie. It was a good movie. It really excelled at presenting uh, Peter Parker as a teenager and the problems of a teenager. But it also felt a little bit of a, I don't know, of, of a not a comic book movie. It's like the comic, the, pack, the fact that he's Spider-Man comes secondary to who he is. So I thought, okay, well, now we know the character and everything. Spider-Man Far From Home I thought was going to be a great movie and it is a good movie it's a really good movie it's enjoyable um i hope to see it again soon but the problem with uh spider-man is that after seeing spider-man into the multiverse last year and that was my favorite movie of last year this movie does feel like a little bit of a letdown and then i know that it shouldn't cloud my opinion of it but it, I, it's hard not to it just falls flat at times the first half of the movie is like almost like a rom-com um, adventure through the <laughs> through Europe um, for everybody. And that's all great and everything. Uh, but it just felt like there was a lot of things also that I wish we could explore it, but not in a Spider-Man movie. You know, the whole thing with Aunt May and, you know, uh, going through her a relationship and everything. That is like something that would be great to, ex you know, to explore. But this wasn't the time to do it. There's a lot of little things that it just wasn't the right time. And this is where I think that Spider-Man would be a great TV show because then you could spend time exploring those smaller details, which is why I really enjoy watching TV shows sometimes as opposed to movies because you get that extra time to really flesh out a character. So, look, I recommend uh, Spider-Man for anybody who's on the fence about watching it, go watch it. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to love it. It has a great, you know, beginning, middle, and end. And the whole rom-com thing, A+. plus. I mean, really, it is A+. plus. It is those feelings that, you know, Peter feels, that MJ feels. All of that stuff is real. It felt real to me. But, you know, like I said, it was great. But, you know, a little disappointing. So, number three. Now we come to the number three, you know, top, top three. Number three is Toy Story 4. It's fun, it's funny, and exciting, and I hope that it's not our last trip with the toys. Maybe Woody and, you know, Buzz go away, but, I mean, everybody else, I can't imagine why. And, you know, Disney's milking these sequels anyway, so they've done four really good ones. Why not, you know, just keep on going and make a fifth? So, I really hope that, you know, it ends up that this won't be our last rodeo uh, with the toys. As for what we have, the story, look at the story is pretty simple. It's pretty plain. There's nothing, mo you know, heavy in there. There is some heavy undertones about, you know, children leaving the nest, I believe. And, you know, how do you move on from that? What happens when your children say, you know what? I really don't need you. Not that, not that they don't need you, but it's time for them to go out on their own to explore. What do you do? You move on with life, right? Life doesn't end at that moment. And so that's kind of the, the feeling that I got from it. But it was nowhere near the emotional drainage of Toy Story 3. It's still fun. I loved Keanu Reeves in it. He does such a great job. But you know what? Everybody does a, does a great job. My biggest complaint, though, honestly, has to do with the fact that how much Buzz was kind of pushed to the side. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of you know, of Tim Allen. I, I don't really consider him a really good person. But I I think that he kinda got shortchanged. His character didn't didn't get enough to do. I know some people aren't gonna really care about that, but for me that kinda was like it, it became the Woody show. So now we've come to number two. Number two is Rocket Man. It had emotional connections that I look for in movies. It really does. I mean first of all I'm a huge Elton John fan. So I love the music. It was done perfectly. I love that spontaneously, you know, people are just walking down the street and they break into songs. I know it was controversial among like musical type fans, 
because of things like that and the fact that it kind of took the timeline and turned it around and that you you have songs like I Want Love, which is a 90s song, you know, being done about an issue when he's a child. And that can throw some people off because some people are like, doesn't go in a linear kind of way. I really didn't care. It was all great. You know, thinking back on it, I tried to think of, well, did I have any problems? I think my only problem <laughs> was that it wasn't long enough. Um, I didn't like the, cut, the cookie cutter kind of, everything is great at the end. I wish that, you know, we had seen more of the, you know, personal type problems. We kind of delve into it. You know, we know, understand that he's on drugs and, you know, and all of that stuff. But I wanted it to be more than just a superficial look at that. So those are the first eight movies. And number nine, or, or the number one movie, I should say, not number nine. It's the number one movie of 2019 so far has been Booksmart. It is a refreshing take on high school. It is one of those movies where there is no real bad guy. Which, let me tell you, is so great. So often in movies, you know, we get people who are like, they're the villains. These people have to be the villains. Well, why do we have to have a villain? Especially in high school movies. Why can't these just be complex characters who are trying to find their way out in the world? You know, it's tough enough than have than having to worry about, you know, that someone dislikes you or hates you. I like that whole idea that the quote unquote stupid or bad kids aren't stupid and bad. They got into good schools too. And so it was just a turning of everything that we've ever looked at in high school uh, movies to be. It got rid of a lot of stereotypes and added new ones and it was so much fun. I enjoyed it. I haven't laughed um, at a movie like like I did during Booksmart in a long time. I really enjoyed myself. And it's one of those movies that I'm definitely going to recommend to anybody to see. It felt as refreshing as the first time that I saw Lady Bird, which was another movie that I saw. And I was just instantly just blown away by the level of craft, not only storytelling, but craftsmanship. It was great. So those are the top nine movies so far that I've seen in 2019. Um, let me know. What do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Um, did I miss something? I haven't seen everything. There are more than a few movies that are not on the list that might have been on the list, but I just haven't seen them. And I'm not going to put a movie that I haven't seen on the list. If there's a really obvious, you know, missing one, then I probably haven't seen it yet or it's on my list. I know I have a stack full of movies. Um, that have already come out on Blu-ray um, that came out this year. And I just need to get around to seeing them um, in mostly smaller movies. Um, and there's a lot of great movies coming out, you know, still, you know, just even this month. So thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get updated. I publish every single day, five days a week, uh, usually Monday through Friday with an occasional show on the weekends. Um, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google pa Podcasts, Spotify or anywhere you pick up your podcast um, and you know stop by the show notes um, you can find our social media links there um, thanks for watching or for listening I should say and have a great day